Sleep Hormone A hormone, from the Greek participle, to set in motion, urge on, is any member of a class of signaling molecules produced by glands in multicellular organisms that are transported by the circulatory system to target distant organs to regulate physiology and behavior. Hormones have diverse chemical structures, mainly of three classes, eicosanoids, steroids, and amino acid slash protein derivatives, amines, peptides, and proteins. The glands that secrete hormones comprise of endocrine signaling system. The term hormone is sometimes extended to include chemicals produced by cells that affect the same cell, autocrine or intracrine signaling, or nearby cells, paracrine signaling. Hormones are used to communicate between organs and tissues for physiological regulation and behavioral activities, such as digestion, metabolism, respiration, tissue function, sensory perception, sleep, excretion, lactation, stress, growth and development, movement, reproduction, and mood. Hormones affect distant cells by binding to specific receptor proteins in the target cell resulting in a change in cell function. When a hormone binds to the receptor, it results in the activation of a signal transduction pathway that typically activates gene transcription resulting in increased expression of target proteins. Non-genomic effects are more rapid, and can be synergistic with genomic effects. Amino acid-based hormones, amines and peptide or protein hormones, are water-soluble and act on the surface of target cells via second messengers. Steroid hormones, being lipid-soluble, move through the plasma membranes of target cells both cytoplasmic and nuclear, to act within their nuclei. Hormone secretion may occur in many tissues. Endocrine glands are the cardinal example, but specialized cells in various other organs also secrete hormones. Hormone secretion occurs in response to specific biochemical signals from a wide range of regulatory systems. For instance, serum calcium concentration affects parathyroid hormone synthesis, blood sugar, serum glucose concentration, affects insulin synthesis, and because the outputs of the stomach and exocrine of pancreas, the amounts of gastric juice and pancreatic juice, become the input of the small intestine, the small intestine secretes hormones to stimulate or inhibit stomach and pancreas based on how busy it is. Regulation of hormone synthesis of gonadal hormones, adrenal cortical hormones, and thyroid hormones is often dependent on complex sets of direct influence and feedback interactions involving the hypothalamic pituitary adrenal. HPA, gonadal, HPG, and thyroid, HPT, axes. Upon secretion, certain hormones, including protein hormones and catecholamines, are water-soluble and are thus readily transported through the circulatory system. Other hormones, including steroid and thyroid hormones, are lipid-soluble, to allow for their widespread distribution, these hormones must bond to carrier plasma glycoproteins, for example, thyroxine binding globulin, TBG, to form ligand protein complexes. Some hormones are completely active when released into the bloodstream, as is the case for insulin and growth hormones, while others are pro-hormones that must be activated in specific cells through a stereosoph activation steps that are commonly highly regulated. The endocrine system secretes hormones directly into the bloodstream, typically via fenestrated capillaries, whereas the exocrine system secretes its hormones indirectly using ducts. Hormones with peregrine function diffuse through the interstitial spaces to nearby target tissue. Hormonal signaling involves the following steps. Hormone-producing cells are typically of a specialized cell type, residing within a particular endocrine gland, such as the thyroid gland, ovaries, and testes. Hormones exit their cell of origin via exocytosis or another means of membrane transport. The hierarchical model is an oversimplification of the hormonal signaling process. Cellular recipients of a particular hormonal signal may be one of several cell types that reside within a number of different tissues, as is the case for insulin, which triggers a diverse range of systemic physiological effects. Different tissue types may also respond differently to the same hormonal signal. The rate of hormone biosynthesis and secretion is often regulated by a homeostatic negative feedback control mechanism. Such a mechanism depends on factors that influence the metabolism and excretion of hormones. Thus, higher hormone concentration alone cannot trigger the negative feedback mechanism. Negative feedback must be triggered by overproduction of an effect of the hormone. Hormone secretion can be stimulated and inhibited by One special group of hormones is the tropic hormones that stimulate the hormone production of other endocrine glands. For example, 
thyroid stimulating hormone, TSH, causes growth and increased activity of another endocrine gland, the thyroid, which increases output of thyroid hormones. To release active hormones quickly into the circulation, hormone biosynthetic cells may produce and store biologically inactive hormones in the form of pre- or pro-hormones. These can then be quickly converted into their active hormone form in response to a particular stimulus. Icosinoids are considered to act as local hormones. They are considered to be local because they possess specific effects on target cells close to their cytop formation. They also have a rapid degradation cycle, making sure they do not reach distant sites within the body. Most hormones initiate a cellular response by initially binding to either cell membrane associated or intracellular receptors. A cell may have several different receptor types that recognize the same hormone but activate different signal transduction pathways, or a cell may have several different receptors that recognize different hormones and activate the same biochemical pathway. Receptors for most peptide as well as many eicosanoid hormones are embedded in the plasma membrane at the surface of the cell and the majority of these receptors belong to the G-protein coupled receptor, GPCR, class of 7 alpha helix transmembrane proteins. The interaction of hormone and receptor typically triggers a cascade of secondary effects within the cytoplasm of the cell, described as signal transduction, often involving phosphorylation or dephosphorylation of various other cytoplasmic proteins changes in ion channel permeability, or increased concentrations of intracellular molecules that may act as secondary messengers, for example, cyclic AMP. Some protein hormones also interact with intracellular receptors located in the cytoplasm or nucleus by an intracrine mechanism. For steroid or thyroid hormones, their receptors are located inside the cell within the cytoplasm of the target cell. These receptors belong to the nuclear receptor family of ligand-activated transcription factors. To bind their receptors, these hormones must first cross the cell membrane. They can do so because they are lipid-soluble. The combined hormone receptor complex then moves across the nuclear membrane into the nucleus of the cell, where it binds to specific DNA sequences, regulating the expression of certain genes, and thereby increasing the levels of the proteins encoded by these genes. However, it has been shown that not all steroid receptors are located inside the cell. Some are associated with the plasma membrane. Hormones have the following effects on the body. A hormone may also regulate the production and release of other hormones. Hormone signals control the internal environment of the body through homeostasis. As hormones are defined functionally, not structurally, they may have diverse chemical structures. Hormones occur in multicellular organisms, plants, animals, fungi, brown algae and red algae. These compounds occur also in unicellular organisms, and may act as signaling molecules, but there is no consensus if, in this case, they can be called hormones. Vertebrate hormones fall into three main chemical classes. Compared with vertebrates, insects and crustaceans possess a number of structurally unusual hormones such as the juvenile hormone, a sesquiterpenoid. Plant hormones include abscisic acid, auxin, cytokinin, ethylene, and gibberellin. Many hormones and their structural and functional analogs are used as medication. The most commonly prescribed hormones are estrogens and progestogens as methods of hormonal contraception and as HRT, thyroxine, as levothyroxine, for hypothyroidism, and steroids, for autoimmune diseases and several respiratory disorders. Insulin is used by many diabetics. Local preparations for use in otolaryngology often contain pharmacologic equivalents of adrenaline, while steroid and vitamin D creams are used extensively in dermatological practice. A pharmacologic dose or superphysiological dose of a hormone is a medical usage referring to an amount of a hormone far greater than naturally occurs in a healthy body. The effects of pharmacologic doses of hormones may be different from responses to naturally occurring amounts and may be therapeutically useful, though not without potentially adverse side effects. An example is the ability of pharmacologic doses of glucocorticoids to suppress inflammation. At the neurological level, behavior can be inferred based on hormone concentrations, hormone release patterns, the numbers and locations of hormone receptors, and the efficiency of hormone receptors for those involved in gene transcription. Not only do hormones influence behavior, but also behavior and the environment influence hormones. Thus, a feedback loop is formed. For example, behavior can affect hormones, which in turn can affect behavior, which in turn can affect hormones, and so on.
Reason Three broad stages of reasoning may be used when determining hormone behavior interactions. There are various clear distinctions between hormones and neurotransmitters. Hormone transport and the involvement of binding proteins is an essential aspect when considering the function of hormones. There are several benefits with the formation of a complex with a binding protein. The effective half-life of the bound hormone is increased. A reservoir of bound hormones is created, which evens the variations in concentration of unbound hormones. Bound hormones will replace the unbound hormones when these are eliminated. The discovery of hormones and endocrine signaling occurred during studies of how the digestive system regulates its activities, as explained at Secrete and Section Discovery. Thanks for watching. Don't forget like the video and don't forget to subscribe.